And we are talking about the hot real estate market in our city. What can you do to help make your home stand out? Well, Colleen Lyle, owner and broker of record at Trinity Stone Realty, is joining us this morning. And in the information there is how you can get a hold of us and put those questions to Colleen today. Colleen, good morning. Nice to see you. Oh, good morning, Annette. Welcome back. Nice to see you. All right. I have seen more for sale signs in my neighborhood. Is it a sign we are starting to see more inventory out there? I'm curious. Yes. So this is the conversation. Canadians, notoriously, we want to talk about the weather and Ottawa people want to talk <laughs> about real estate. So we... This has been a continued conversation, not only, you know, generally with our audience, yet also internally with my colleagues um, throughout the city. And so there, um, we've talked about this before, Annette. So where the market is at right now is, I wish I had a crystal ball. We, we are just coming out of, you know, um, of lockdown and people were allowed to travel. So March break normally is a slowdown time for us. That is that is par per par under normal circumstances before COVID. Everybody just kind of went away and traveled. So we did always see the market slow down a little bit in March break. Okay. And then we ended up with Easter. And so when I talk to my agents, not only on my team, but at the brokerage, it's it's don't panic. The market is not slowing down. Just people are enjoying a little bit of freedom. They're enjoying travel. They're enjoying time with their family because they can finally go see grandparents that they haven't had um, seen for like two years, mm -hmm. right? So, so we did see a little bit of a lull. So what is also interesting though, and I know Annette that you and I have talked about this in years previous, we now also have an election. <laughs> and so with an election coming up, being Ottawa, it doesn't affect all cities the same way. Yet with a pending election, sometimes that also affects the market um, where people are, are freezing a little bit because they don't know um, if, like, if they'll have a job or where they're going to go. Right. And so we have, we have that in play. Lastly, you know, we also have the, um, the pending um, discussion about interest rates. So we are definitely going to see another interest rate hike. This has been planned time and time again. Um, that is why, you know, a couple of years ago, people were being approved for higher rates, even though they were getting 1.2, you know, 2.1, yeah. and yet they were being approved at the 5% rate. So this has all been pre-planned. Yet all with all these um, items coming at buyers, people are a little sensitive, especially here in Ottawa. So, so let me ask you on the interest rate then point, does that, if we, you know, it's gone up twice now and we know it's only going to continue to go up. So, um, but how fast or exactly when is the unknown part? So are people then knowing it's going up, rushing out to get a house or trying to while they're still very low? Or is that starting to slow people down and they're saying, sorry, I'm just going to stay put in the house I'm in? There's actually, and that's a great question, there is a two-prong answer to that. There are two conversations I am having with uh, buyers and sellers right now. There are sellers that I'm talking to right now saying, we're, we're getting out, we're going to get out while the market is hot, we don't have a plan, and or we're going to move to the cottage, right? So we, we are having a lot of those conversations, and I know my colleagues are as well. So we will probably see over the next little while um, a lot more homes coming up on the market, as you hinted. Um, I myself, um, in the last week, I'm looking, sorry, I'm looking at my board, I've got at least seven, eight listings coming up in the next week. So the market, people are coming on the market. Within reason, though, buyers are having those conversations with their finance people, and I'm telling them, you know, when you get pre-approved, it's pre-approval at 90 days max. So if your pre-approval hasn't been looked at and you're out there shopping for a home, please make sure that you have touch base with your finance advisor, right. your mortgage broker, your bank. Make sure that you have touched base with them. And if you are, if you are looking at buying a home, please, please, please hold, like, stand still. Do not go out and buy furniture. Do not go out and buy a car. 
do not just focus on putting more down payment and working with a realtor who will be proactive with you in order to find that home for you. Lots of people tend to be more interested even, as we've talked about in the past, looking to buy a house at this time of year, traditionally, although it seems to be all months of the year in this city. Let's talk about the fact that, um, you know, we've touched on this before. It doesn't matter how strong the seller's market is right now. You still have to prep your home. What are the key things you have to do to your home to, to make the most amount of money off of it? Yes. So it's a great question. And it's, and you know, it's, it's funny because people don't think about moving until they've made the decision of moving and, you know, it's now spring. So I talk about it as spring cleaning and some of the sellers that I'm talking to right now, they're not selling until October, November. And I'm okay with that. It's a matter of prepping and getting mentally ready. Um, as I've shared, sadly, um, so many times, you know, I recently became an empty nester. And so all my girls are, are gone. And so my husband and I are, are decluttering and doing things for the home so that when we make the decision um, to move, that, um, that it will be easier, that the house will be ready. And so it's always, um, it's always hard when I talk to someone, they're like, we need to sell now and they have 20 years of clutter and or upgrades to do. So I call this kind of the spring cleaning and honey to do list um, that um, you meant to get to and, and always should. So a good, a good example, um, and, I'll, and I'll use for example, um, a home that I went to go see um, just past the Ottawa borders and lovely home, very, very cute yet she never uses the front door and her um, front door was, was dated and tired and the caulking had uh, grayed and stuff like that. So even though the front of the house was really, really cute, you could tell that the front door hadn't been used in a while. And so for, for, um, for all purposes, even if you don't use your front door and a lot of people don't, they go through the garage, they go through the side door the front door is your first impression. Mm. So do you, do you need to paint your front door? You don't always have to replace it. Um, in my case, my, my front door did not work with my house, so I decided to replace it. Yet it might need a fresh coat of paint. You just might, might need to change out the caulking because caulking does gray and, and get tired. So the first impression is that front door, is how your house looks doesn't look taken care of does yeah. it look warm and welcoming so the front door is really really important at this time of year does it really help to put out some fresh flowers and and do a little bit of gardening does that help at this time of year absolutely so when we talk about um gardening there is there's two frames of thoughts definitely you know go to your big box stores go to your local gardeners and, and definitely put out some pots. If you're planning on selling during the spring and summer, flowers are welcoming. And, and don't just pick a random color. Pick one that, that does go with the house, um, you know, or mixed, mixed colors, um, not anything that would necessarily clash. And pick something that is easy to take care of, especially if you are planning to be away while you are doing showings, mm. but definitely flowers. And then when you talk about landscaping for the front of the house, has your patio been maintained? A lot of us have interlock um, going into our front walkway. Have you taken care of the weeds out there? Mm -hmm. um, and, and does that look taken care of? Is there any heaving? Definitely, um, you know what, a great, a great thing, especially right now, if, um, if the front, walk, um, front gardens are really a bit of a hassle um, because of time, because of your schedule. You know, you've got, you know, four kids and going each and every direction. Put out some great mulch. It'll save you some time and it will keep everything settled and it will look again like you're taking care of the house. Yeah, because, because as we know it, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, because we've talked about, I mean, we often talk about the inside of the home, but this is the first visual someone gets, right? I mean, when they pull up and they see the for sale sign and they look, that's that curb appeal that if they don't like what they see from the outside they're probably not going to even bother looking anymore 
Well, and that's that's just it because one thing is like, oh, I meant to get to it. Oh, I meant to get to it. There are many buyers who are driving by your house before they decide if they're going to go inside. Yeah. So perfect example. So you know your perennials, etc. Has your does your roof need doing? I don't want to do my roof. It's really expensive. Yet if your if your shingles are curled and everything else, no, you can't add that ten to twelve. 13,000 onto your um, sale bill, yet, again, it is a sale factor that will be huge for the buyer. Right. So that that's huge. And huge, those things huge, then huge. become, they then become like bargaining tools, right, at the very end. Yes. So like if you do, like yes, if you have a little do. bit of a broken fence or something or a crack in the window, all those little things, if you don't repair those, which might not cost you a lot of money, the buyer can come in then and say, knock off a thousand, knock off five thousand, knock off, because yeah. they see that as not only a bigger expense, but time consuming. Like, right, a lot of people want to move in and not have to fix a house. So that then becomes would, a problem if you don't do it. Yeah, and it was interesting because one of our recent sales, the seller uh, repaired all their windows, um, did some great landscaping, and as we were putting the for sale sign out on the front lawn, neighbors came by and said, just tell your seller how great their house looks. Wow. And and how how much we love what they've done to the house. Mm -hmm. And there was definitely pride of ownership. And as we talked about, Annette, people make a decision on if they're going to buy the house, usually within the first 15 minutes. Wow. And that first impression is really important. So... So there might be something as simple as walk around your house and see if you have any purging cracks or foundation cracks yep. that you need to be repaired. Walk around the house and see what you need to do. And if you're not planning on moving, like myself, for maybe four or five years, I'm doing it now because then I get to enjoy it. Yeah. So, so appreciate that. You know, the honey to do list <laughs> is always is always great to do. Yet always. Always keep your home um, up to par because at the end of the day, when a buyer walks into your home and sees that you have pride of ownership, yep. that makes a huge difference. All right. Four seven four one seven three five nine nine trinitystonerealty.com. All right, we have a question coming in. This one from Anne. Anne writes, when is a good time to list if you want to sell for the end of July or the beginning of August? Colleen, what do you think? Thank you so much, Anne. Um, Anne, um, list now, <laughs> basically. I would, um, you know, I would be happy to chat with her. The big thing is that with Anne, like, how ready is your home? Do you have a realtor that's going to provide um, staging and proper photography? And um, we're talking about having the house ready. As I mentioned, um, we have seven, I'm sorry, I keep looking at my board, seven, eight listings coming up, and they're all for a little bit later, and we're prepping them now. They're doing paint. They're doing everything that we're talking about this morning and the fact that we're checking everything. We're doing some pre-inspection. So, Anne, it's a great question, yet today I, I want you to give, um, you know, your favorite realtor, give our team a call, and so that we can create a plan because we need to get you on the market now. Yeah, and because you know you can you can can you you can still do ninety day close, right? So I mean we're absolutely May 4th today. So she Anne said the end of July, early August. That brings us to August fourth, essentially, right? So away we go. It, it, and it, I mean, if if Anne now has you know if Anne is in a smaller single town home, you know we may be looking at a shorter close, and she has some more time. Yet if she's in a four, three, four bedroom single or a large bungalow, that we can negotiate time. The key is for, for, um, for proper planning is meeting with realtors, talking to them, finding who clicks with you and who will take care of you. I was really surprised the other day, just yesterday I was talking to someone and the realtor would never return their phone call. And within, you know, an hour, I had all the information they needed and helped them and now are working with them because the realtor is not returning their calls. Mm -hmm. So it's really important. Again, we always talk about how important your realtor is and the fact that it's not about the sale. I need to repeat that. It is not about the sale or getting your business. It is about helping you and creating a plan for you that works for you to get the most money. 
for you. So that's really important. And, you know, when it comes to working with a realtor, you can lean on a realtor for a whole host of things. I know, Colleen, you've talked about working with stagers who can help you if this is, you know, if you're not sure how to make your house look staged and at its best. Uh, do you have people like handymen or stagers, like all yes. those kind of experts who can help someone, even the photography, like getting it ready, the outdoor work, the gardening, all of the kind of things that maybe some homeowners, it just doesn't come naturally to them, but they know that that's work that needs to be done. That's where a realtor can also assist in that, right? Absolutely. We always come in with our toolkit, basically, and see how we could best help you and create that plan for you so that this is painless because moving can be painful. And so, you know, it's, it's not about the sale. It's about helping. So there are certain things definitely that we need to look at. I, I often, for example, we talk about getting your home painted. Um, we all have loved, you know, bright colors and, and you may, you may love your color in your home. It may be green. It may be pink. It may be orange. And that is great for you, yet understand that when you put your house on the market, we need to put it on the market in a way that attracts the most buyers. You are now a product on the market, and how can we best sell it to put the most money in your park pocket? I often get asked about um, closets. Um, when we are cleaning our closets out, we do have to pack anyway, right? Mm -hmm. we, are, are, we are planning on moving. Right. We are pl so why don't we half pack, right? We don't need, Annette, our, our sweaters in our, in, our, in our closets anymore. Hopefully, let's, let's hope <laughs> Rosie doesn't pull a fast one. But um, <laughs> we don't need our sweaters. We don't need, so put right. them in boxes and put them away, right? Saving and, you the and, work, you got to do it later, like you said, anyways, right? So getting that stuff out, it, it helps the process instead of trying to cram everything all at one time. We got to go. We're short on time. I know we could talk about this for hours still, Colleen. <laughs> and it's an exciting topic always in our city, of course, real estate. If you'd like to reach out to Colleen directly, she's got a whole bunch of knowledge to share with you. That's all the information right there on how you can contact her right there on your screen.